You're about to listen to Kelly Martin Speaks. I'm your host, Kelly, and the author of When Everyone Shines But You, a mental health and self-acceptance blogger and a recovering darkness addict. I have experienced intense anxiety, deep depression and life trauma, but I'm coming out of the other side now. Darkness was a comfort zone for me for a long time, and it felt safer than the light. So in this podcast, I share with you my journey into the light and how I move through challenge in an empowering way. I'll share with you tools and nurturing ways to embrace your humanity. I was once a shy, scared introvert, afraid to speak, but that's all changing. Let's take this journey together and learn to fly. Hi there, welcome back to Kelly Martin Speaks. I am your host, Kelly Martin, and this is episode 72. Today I am going to talk about why it's important to become clear about what is really taking place in this world, so as to have a unity among people right now. Maybe you are in the UK and suffering the trials of the great Brexit torture. Or maybe you are in the USA experiencing intense political pain or marching for independence in Catalonia, fighting against brutal governments in Hong Kong and even Paris. The list goes on with what is actually taking place worldwide. So what is really happening? Okay. I start this with a disclaimer. You may feel this is a slightly different episode to normal. It may even smell of conspiracy. But I have often said many conspiracy theories are labelled that way because they are too close to the truth. So bear with me here and remain as open-minded as you possibly can. Now, this week in my blog, I wrote about how fear creates divisions among people and how in many parts of the world there is a kind of divide and conquer happening within politics directed at the ordinary person on the street. In the UK, we are divided between leaving the European Union and remaining in it. And to be a leave voter is very challenging. In my own life, I have had to let friends go because they haven't wanted anyone who has a different vote to them or opinion. As I said in a previous podcast, I've had personal attacks and so much more because of my decision to vote leave. There has been a strong feeling of us versus them and instead of trusting one another to simply be human and have the right to have different viewpoints, we have become distrustful of the other. And in my blog post, I quoted Prospect.org who said, Democracies require sufficient social trust that citizens regard the views of those they disagree with as worthy of equal consideration to their own. That way, they'll accept political outcomes they dislike. So, in almost every country going through some significant shift right now, we are being taught to mistrust our fellow man or woman by politicians and the elite. And we are being taught by mainstream media and those in power, be it political or corporate, that they will take care of the problems and the other, as in the other person. I had been struggling a lot with what has been happening, working a lot on not judging the other person or feeling resentment, but it has been really hard. And my main feeling has been why are so many political figures and even worldwide figures like Barack Obama saying that leaving the EU is a bad idea. Why are 
80% of the UK government and the members of parliament wanting to remain? And why is most of our mainstream media pro-remain? There must be something deeper going on here. So this week, someone gifted me with a message on Facebook, which I have to be honest was such a relief because I was not sure how I could cope with another three months of Brexit torture in our country due to yet another Brexit extension in the EU have given us. And if you are unaware, the EU Commission is formed of unelected people. Some have questionable records and none of them are accountable to anyone. So apart from wanting our physical sovereignty the right to make our own laws and trade with who we want to trade with and so much more, to leave our choices and our freedom in the hands of the EU Commission is horrifying to many in the UK. So we, we the majority, actually won the Leave vote. But you wouldn't think that was the way when you look at what's happening in the UK and if you were in the UK right now. So this message reminded me of something I watched on Netflix a little while ago called The Family, a true documentary series about things happening in the world via breakfast meetings and groups under the guise of religion. But it is all about power, where only invited and wealthy, influential and sometimes dictators are present, often allowed to get away with some pretty horrendous stuff because they believe they are the chosen ones. As the programme said of one of the persons in charge of the family, Doug Coe, his ethos seemed to be, the more you can make your organisation invisible, the more influence it will have. These people you could call the elite of the world are controlling how everything works as a group. And for most of the time they have remained invisible until now. Fortunately, with the blessing of social media, we have the opportunity to do research back to source. We have the chance to have and share free thought. The internet is one thing, so far anyway, that they haven't been able to entirely block when it comes to freedom of speech. So we hear via videos and audio of these influential people speaking and can then come to our own conclusions. However, social media also makes it easy for these elite to create chaos and confusion and whatever their agenda is to sway public opinion in that direction, as has been the case with Brexit, where many people, even outside the UK, have been what I call it, propaganda, (laughs) propagandised. They have been influenced by propaganda to believe it is a bad thing for the UK people. Much like what is happening in the USA. In the EU, we have dark and serious messages being shared, unelected bureaucrats talking about building empires, EU armies and so forth, and As we have been three years trying to leave the EU, it shows how difficult it has been for us to leave. This is not a coincidence, I feel. But please bear with me, I just need to get the heavy stuff out of the way before we get into the ways we can bring unity back again amongst all of this corruption and manipulation. Now, the message I saw on Facebook... That really inspired me. It was more of a clarity and awareness thing. And it said, this is a global group, let's say in a position of power, which they are drastically losing, but that is another issue. This group includes the EU. This group has an agenda. The reasons behind the agenda are multi-layered and the information is out there if you want to dig deeper but that is not necessary in order to understand the Brexit torture game. Part of this group's agenda is to create super-states and eventually a one-world government. 
the group will continue at any cost to work towards that agenda, not away from it. Britain is part of the European superstate. So Britain leaving the EU is against their agenda. And they will do everything, everything they can to prevent it. And she goes on to say that the British cry for freedom will be punished. Because the elite cannot let this happen. And boy, have we felt punished. Those of us who have voted leave have become outcasts. Unable to share publicly or among friends or family that we voted leave. To vote remain is to belong. To vote remain is to be socially acceptable. So this is what many of us are starting to see now. I feel the veil is lifting and where much of this was hidden before, it cannot be any longer. Too many people are waking up and it is important to get to know the agendas of our governments, corporations and those very influential people we see on the news and the news media channels themselves. But becoming aware is only the beginning. We need to start finding a way to come to terms with a lot of things. Some of what is happening we may not be able to change or influence. Some of what is happening may be so deeply embedded that there is no way out. For us in the UK, we may never leave the EU. And we may become even stronger bedfellows, so to speak. And the corruption in the USA and other countries may not change. So we can either fight it, resist it and drown in it, or find a new way of looking at it that enables first an inner unity and then an outer unity. How do we get an inner unity when everything just feels so divisive and wrong? We become aware. We don't close our eyes to emotive and distracting news headlines. We begin to learn all about manipulation and how easily it can be to manipulate through the written and spoken word. So that we can see when people are trying to pull the wool over our eyes. Or creating smoke screens like a lot of the media does. We then try to start seeing it all as a game. There is an agenda taking place. But if we can become observers and see how people are getting pitted off each other. Against one another, the ordinary person on the street. Families divided and see what is happening without engaging. We are part way there to not letting this agenda influence us. Because this agenda is there to change how we behave. Societies drowning in fear are easily manipulated. And societies, especially, which have lost their sense of identity are also more easily influenced. For example, when I was a teenager, I was encouraged by my college that I was studying at to march in London for an organisation called Youth Against Racism in Europe. We were there to protest against some far-right organisations called the British National Party or the National Front. What I did not realise until recently is that this whole experience in my childhood influenced how I saw British culture. I began to be indoctrinated into believing that the British flag was something to be ashamed of. I was being taught to believe that being British is not a good thing. Now, looking back at it, I can see how the early days of the European Union were influencing me, and it was nothing to do with immigration and an increase in non-British people into the country. It was a slow degradation of my pride in Britain and my ability to define myself as British. Even now, in my 40s, I have to look on the internet to remind myself what British culture is. Because I often forget. 
Now go to non-EU countries like Japan, Malaysia, China, where there is a deeply significant culture. Their identity is deep, albeit they have been westernised in the cities and the young people probably feel less of a connection to their national identity as a result. So it is important to recognise how, how easily we have been living our lives unconsciously. Often there is a slow drip, drip, drip of manipulation that gets to us even more than the loud, broad statements we hear or see. This is why extreme right groups are becoming bigger in many countries. This is why Donald Trump got into power. The people had lost their national identity and he provided an outlet for that. Even if it is to the extreme end of the scale when it comes to prejudice and racism. If the USA, like the UK, had allowed its youth to develop a stronger identity, aside from prejudice of the other, then things would be very different today. Societies who are more mindful, more loving, more understanding, can still thrive during, during these pre-made agenda games the elite are playing with all of our lives. If I was to start finding the unity within me about the torture of Brexit, I would first look to see what it was that I'm fighting against or for. I am fighting against control and for freedom. I am fighting for sovereignty. I am fighting for safety. Now, as some will tell you, you could be in a prison cell and still be completely free because you are awake, aware and conscious of the moment that you're in. You accept what's happening. You choose to embrace it. So I could accept that our country may be under deeper control. It may not. Tides do turn. And know that freedom lies within me. I am not in prison. My own Brexit exit comes from within me first and foremost. The EU can no longer be my personal prison guard. Nor can our corrupt politicians, MPs or media. I connect with myself through meditation, mindfulness, appreciating what I have. And recognising that I am sovereign. That this land is merely a reflection of this sovereignty. And we could leave the EU. I would be sovereign. We could remain in the EU. I would still be sovereign. My unity begins by embracing my thoughts with care and support. My unity begins by embracing my fears with love. And from this place my unity will ripple outwards. So if you are living in a country where there is a huge division between people, begin to see if resisting and fighting is working for you. Are you able to step back and accept and surrender in an empowering way to what is? And then find a way to see what you want is inside of you, first and foremost. And please know this does not mean you don't act. You do take action. Just do it from a more empowered place. Instead of, for example... Me voting in our election in December, instead of me fighting against the opposition, I can cast my vote, accept the result and let go of my resistance to it and trust that things are unfolding in the way they are meant to. This is where my freedom comes from. My freedom does not come from fighting the result but from releasing my attachment to the result like it does in all of life. So start your inner unity today. Become very aware. Try not to dismiss what may sound like a conspiracy as rubbish immediately. 
have an open mind and see how far down the rabbit hole you can go. And good luck. Thanks for listening to another episode of Kelly Martin Speaks. If you have a question or topic you are struggling with and would like me to answer on an upcoming podcast episode, please do get in touch. Your name will remain confidential. Email me at kellymartinspeaks at gmail.com or message me on Facebook via my page Kelly Martin Speaks. And don't forget, if you feel that others are passing you by and the not good enough voices screaming loudly, pop by kellymartin.co.uk to find out all about my books, including book one, When Everyone Shines But You. You can also support my channel via my podcast page on my website, kellymartinspeaks.co.uk via PayPal. Until next time, bye for now. You've been listening to my podcast, Kelly Martin Speaks. I'd really appreciate your feedback. If you're listening on iTunes, please give me a review. It helps me be seen and heard by those that need it. You can also follow me on kellymartinspeaks.co.uk where you can read my blogs, find out about my book series and subscribe to my monthly newsletter. I'm also all over social media. So search for me via Kelly Martin Speaks on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. I'll speak to you next week. Bye.